Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what we're going to go over is a method for painting elves, and whether they be generic elves from a box that you've picked up somewhere, or perhaps they're warriors of the Last Alliance, or like this fella here from a Kickstarter which is coming up, which is going to feature men and elves of the Last Alliance. Now the sculptor very kindly sent along a sample so that I could have a bit of a play around, and I finally got her hands on a bit of paint, and have had a lot of fun painting them up. So no matter what it is you've got on your painting desk, if you've got a fantasy bent and you want to get an army on the table relatively quickly, here's how. I will pop a link to the Kickstarter in the description, and it should go live today, so fingers crossed there, well worth checking out. All the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the base recipe. Let's get started. I've started here after cleaning up the miniature and assembling with a primer spray of Retributor Armor. Now, Retributor Armor is kind of pricey at the moment, so I'd also recommend what you can use instead would be a silver. Uh, if you can find maybe gunmetal or plate mail metal from the Army Painter, or even a light grey, and then you can just paint a couple of coats of Retributor Armor from the pot over the top. Which, funnily enough, is what we're going to do now anyway. You'll see, this isn't quite as shiny as it could be, conditions weren't really perfect for spraying, and sometimes a metallic will come out with a slightly dull sheen to it. So it's good practice, no matter what brand you're using, once you've applied a metallic primer, to put that colour on from the pot. So here is a little Retributor Armour from the pot, <laughs> and I'm going to apply that. You'll see straight over the top that's got a slightly warmer feel to it, which I really like. Uh, you can also use it as an opportunity to jam into some of the areas where you might have missed with the primer. Uh, parts like his face and his cloak, I'm not going to paint specifically because they're not going to be gold later, but also I don't have to worry about hitting them. So let's just go around now and brighten up that gold a bit. Now, I don't think it's too hard to see that that is a slightly warmer gold. And on that note, we're going to shade the whole thing straight away. Now, you could use here Reichland Flesh Shade if you like a rich, rosy sort of finish. Instead, I'm going to go for Agrax Earthshade. Reason being, this gives us a slightly darker, more sort of careworn finish to the gold, which I like. It looks a little more ancient, which to me seems appropriate for elves. So let's just load up a brush and start applying this over all of the gold. You can put it over the whole miniature, it won't really matter. You don't really need to overload it, so... Once you've got enough to get a bit of shading there, that's plenty. So I'm going to do this over all of the armor, and then we'll give it about half an hour to dry, see what we have when this is done. And once it has had plenty of time to settle, you're going to have something that looks like this. I really like how that looks. I think a, a burnished gold really suits the ancient look that you might want to lean into with your elves, but it's of course up to you, as I'm always fond of saying. I'm going to move on now, and I have here one of my makeup brushes, this is the Lux Pencil, and I will always suggest pick up makeup brushes for dry brushing. Uh, they are absolutely brilliant, use all of the tools that are available to you. So we're going to work this into the bristles good and proper, and work some of it off onto a bit of kitchen towel. You can dry brush the edge of your base to see what you'll leave behind, but I'm going to start on the shield here, and spend a few passes back and forth and you'll see, the thing I really like about Sigmarite is that it's a ethereal kind of silvery gold. Uh, it reminds me of old, what was it, burnished gold from the uh, older paint range. And what I'm going to do is pretty generously dry brush all of the armor. Now, any areas which you struggle to reach with the brush, don't worry. Uh, because if you struggle to reach it with a brush, you probably won't see it very well. So you can always sort of pass it off as, well, that's the shading, that's the shadows in there. So straight down the front of his chest here. All right, and let's get a look at what this looks like once this has had a couple of passes. Now, if you want to finish that off with an even more burnished gold kind of look, get a little bit of Necron Compound. And I've got here, this is the Spotliner pencil. And just lightly catch the extreme edges. Normally brushing straight down is going to be your safest bet here. Just a few parts where you want a little bit of a silvery edge, and that's going to look real nice. And there we go, there is the armor painted. Now I really like how that turns out. I don't ordinarily like to toot my own horn, but I love that gold finish, eh? That suits me down to the ground. We'll move on now and start painting the rest of his gear. 
And for this, I'm starting off with McCrag Blue. I'm going to paint in his drapey capey thingy. And you will find that you're going to need two coats of this. Slow down when you come near to the patches of armor you've already done. But if you do make any mistakes, you, know, you need to tidy this up later. What you can do is a little bit of auric armor gold uh, to tidy up, you know, go over the blue a couple of times. And then something like Iron Breaker or Iron Hand Steel just to finish off that silver highlight again. So you don't have to dry brush the whole panel a second time. But I'm going to go over all of this. Now, as well as painting in his tabard and the skirts there, I've also chosen to use the gems in that same color too. Reason being, if I just paint the blue across the bottom half of them, it's kind of cut them, cut them off at the waist. Whereas I think using the gems, I can lift that color up and tie it all in together. I think that looks quite nice. What I'm using now, this is Celestra Gray. I'm going to use this instead of a pure white because I want a little touch of blue to this as well. So I'm going to do the edges of his little tabard thing here. Uh, now I might have chosen the wrong order to do things here, to be perfectly honest, because I want to get in and paint... Oh, there we go. Uh, I want to paint his trousers and his sleeves in this white as well. And I have a funny feeling I'm going to hit a fair bit of the blue while I do this. Uh, better that I hit the blue than the gold, though, because I can very easily uh, tidy the blue up a little later. So yeah, there's little bits of visible sleeves and his trousers I'm going to paint in white. Well, celestial grey. Now that blue under there I'm going to tidy up a little bit later. I'm not too worried about it now. I'm going to move on and we'll paint in his cloak. And for this I'm going to use the fang. I could probably use a slightly larger brush to start this off with. Now I thought about doing this in black, um, but as I was thinking about it, I realized I actually really like the visual language of Peter Jackson's movies. Especially when you look at the differences between the colors of each of the armies. You have the really shining elves, uh, the men of Minas Tirith and Numenor in that really bright silver, which then mirrors that kind of gunmetal look for the, the Mordor orcs and the Urukai. Uh, scene two, you've then got the incredibly distinct look for the men of Rohan with the green and browns. It's really nice. And I think a lot of thought went into these color schemes. So why reinvent the wheel when somebody else has already done all that for me? So <laughs> I'm going to stick to that for now. Now from the front, it doesn't look like much, but spin him around. Yeah, that's the business. Now I'm going to go ahead and pretty much finish off the clothing. I have here black gray from Vallejo. And I'm using this because when it comes to black clothing, never use a true black. It doesn't really give you much. It looks unnatural. Versus a really dark gray, you can do a little bit more to it. So I'm going to paint in his boots with this, his gloves as well, because I kind of assume he's wearing gloves. And as well, I'm going to paint in up here on the mask. Uh, if I get him a little closer, there we go. There is this section here which looks like it could be um, either part of the helmet or a face mask. I'm going to paint it as fabric because I think... Again, same as earlier, talking about moving the blue up the body with the boots, the gloves, and then the face. I think that's going to look quite cool, but I will use a smaller brush for that one. As well, I also remembered at last he's got a belt, so I thought black would be an easy way to tie in that whole body experience there as well. Now, if you do want to go ahead and paint in his eyes or just give a little bit of character to the face, before doing this stage, you could pop in a little bit of Cadian flesh tone or similar. I don't think it stands out enough to be worth the extra effort. For your rank and file guys anyway. For your characters, you might spend that little bit of extra time. I've now got beige brown, and this is one of my favorite Vallejo colors for wood. Uh, if you want to stick to the Citadel range, then something like XV88 is a good substitute here. Or Mornfang brown, but I'm using this because I really like it. And now we're going to apply what is really our last base coat. I have some Iron Hand Steel and a helicopter buzzing madly outside. And I'm going to paint in the blade of his spear. And also this little, this little section on the front of his belt. I think that in silver will look quite nice. 
Now once your second set of base coats have settled and dried, it's time to apply the shade to them. Now for this I'm using Nuln Oil, and before anyone asks, this is the old version. Um, I'm not sure what the new one is going to do. I would suggest that if you want something which looks like this, what you could do would be to get some dark tone from the Army Painter and add in just a couple of dots of water that will change up the uh, flow and consistency so it's much more like this. I'm not going to apply very much of this. We're just looking to get a little bit of shading and to more clearly mark the edges of some of these areas. But yeah, all those other base coats we've just applied, lay down some known oil now. Now once that dries, you're going to see it's much the same, just a little bit darker. And we're going to move on straight away to some highlights. I'm going to start off with Stormfang, which is a dry paint. I can't remember whether or not they're getting rid of this, but if they do, you can just dry brush with some rust gray instead. What I'm going to do is, using the edge of my brush, just catch the very high points of the back of the cloak to introduce a little bit of depth to this. Now it will be a little bit rough. You'll see some chalkiness appearing as you dry brush, which, you know, oh well. But when we varnish this later, that's going to practically disappear. So back and forth from both sides to make sure that you catch both sides of the, uh, the raised areas. And when you're done with that, using a smaller brush and some of that rust gray, you can catch the bits at the front here. Because I don't really want to run a dry brush along these areas and muck up my gold. But a little bit of rust gray here will make these uh, cloak folds look that bit sharper. As well, you can also use this to tidy up some of the uh, dry brush highlights, if you fancy, and just make them a little stronger. Now for the more rich blue at the front, I have a little Calgar blue here. And we're going to do the same thing again, just very carefully pick out some of the edges. Now if your highlight goes a little bit awry, because I'm actually having kind of a difficulty painting straight lines today, uh, what you can do is go back to your McCrag blue and tidy them up as necessary. So I might want to do that in a couple of these, but one way or the other, a little bit of Calgar blue here to accentuate these folds. To highlight our Celestial Grey from earlier, I'm turning to Orthuan Grey. Now, same as with black, I'd suggest don't go to a pure white for most clothing, because it's going to look unnatural. So, Orthuan Grey with its little bit of blue to it is going to work very nicely here. Now, I don't think that necessarily you need to highlight the black, but if you do want to go that route, just a tiny touch of Dawnstone on the back of Knuckles and such will add just enough to give those hands some definition. It'll go on quite bright, but as it dries, that will look a lot more subtle. Now, if you do want to highlight, Finally, any of the very sharp edges of gold or silver. Uh, what I've got here, this is Model Metallic Air Chrome from Vallejo. And as my grandfather would put it, bloody hell boy, that's bright. So uh, yeah, be sparing with this, but it looks, it looks so cool. Uh, Stormhost Silver is a very close substitute for this if you do want to stick to Citadel. But anywhere that you want a final really sharp ding on the uh, highlighting, just a tiny touch of this, and I mean a tiny touch of this, will do the job. Now if you liked how that armor looked beforehand, you don't need to go that far with the gold. Um, I really like it. I think it's worth doing on your characters. Like If you want your heroes to look a little shinier, then it is worth the extra effort. But for your rank and file, same as with the face, you might choose to ignore it. I'm going to move on now and paint the gems. And I really like this method because it's super easy to clean up if you make a mistake as you go. So I have here Hoeth Blue, and I really like their name. I'm going to paint from about halfway up on one side. Let's just paint a moon shape into this gem. And when I say it's easy to tidy up, if I put too much on, I can go straight back to my McCrag Blue and just fill over that area again. So you see, just repeating the, the gesture over and over till I get a nice strong burst of color. And yeah, about a third of the gem I want in this rich blue. And same, of course, with the gem on his shield. Don't forget the one on his chest. 
I've got now Fenrisian Grey, and this is a really sharp, icy kind of blue. What I'm going to do is about half of what we've just painted in uh, the Hoeth blue, we're going to paint in now with Fenrisian Grey to get that cool three-dimensional effect. I'm going to be fairly sparing with this, but make sure you are catching the edges there. And then finally, here you could use Orthuan Grey since you've got it, but this is the one time I'm going to suggest a pure white is going to be the right choice. So what I'm going to do, load up my brush, just put a little ding in one corner, and then up on the opposite side, sort of representing where the light is coming in, ding, the other side. And there's our gems painted. Now that's really the dude finished. What I'm going to do now is take him outside and hit him with a varnish. Now I'd recommend ordinarily using a satin, uh, something like Munitorum varnish from Citadel has a very faint shine to it. It's not a pure matte. Uh, I am going to use matte varnish on this guy because unfortunately satin doesn't photograph as well. So yeah, that's a bit of a sod. But once you've got that satin on, if you're doing it at home, what I'm going to do then is pop a little bit of gloss varnish on the gems to really make them shine. So let's get a look at what he looks like when he is finally all finished. And there at last, our elf is complete. Now these techniques will work on pretty much anything elven that you want to paint, whether it be something for the Last Alliance, or just by something as simple as swapping up the colours for the skirt and the tabard and the cloak, swap them out for a brown or a green, and you've got your wood elves there as well. The basics of this will work for just about anything, and honestly, not just elves. So, <laughs> something to have a bit of fun with, and in particular, I think that armor comes out really nicely. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Ella Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support really keeps me doing stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.